As expected, the cathedral media has taken the far-left big state position in the case of Panama Papers and took all the baits available and then some. This is not a surprise given that the cathedral media is almost always in bed with the government and when it isn't, it's because the middle-class left-wing pricks who compose, comprise the cathedral media think the government is not communist enough. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Freedom Alternative Research and Analysis. By now you're all probably aware of the Panama Papers scandal which was triggered by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists who enabled the grand theft of over 11 million private papers. Of course, you didn't hear it described in this fashion in the cathedral media, because heaven forbid the cathedral media ever be concerned with one's privacy or with any other sort of moral principles. For the pricks in the cathedral media, anything is moral as long as it advances the goals of a bigger and bigger state. But going beyond the hypocrisy of the media and the governments who seem very little concerned over this act of grand theft, whilst at the same time being, being very concerned with the exact same thing is done by people like Snowden or Manning. So going beyond this little hypocrisy, let's look a little bit at the results. I mean, what did we learn from the Panama Papers? That Putin is corrupt and the officials around him are also corrupt oligarchs? Really? I mean, we needed a massive leak to learn this? What else did we learn? That David Cameron's father had offshore firms? I mean, I knew that 10 years ago and I'm not even British. What else? Oh, we learned that uh, Chinese upper echelon party members are also had cash hidden. Wow, what a stunning surprise. It's not like 100% of dictators of the last 100 years had cash hidden. We also learned that the family that runs Azerbaijan also has hidden cash. Again, is anyone surprised? You see where I'm going with this? The actual things revealed were mostly things we already knew. Heck, some of the individuals targeted were already blacklisted in the United States for because of money laundering. So it was already known and proven information, even without this gross breach of privacy. Just like in the case of WikiLeaks, this particular leak will eventually harm innocent, discrete individuals and will not harm those that it should harm. Because let me be clear on this, the politicians should not have the same standard as we, the plebs. The politicians should be the first to live under the rules they themselves created. When you see politicians dodging the rules they themselves created, then the discussion should start on whether those rules are really such a fabulous idea to begin with, if even those who write them cannot bear them. But instead of that, the cathedral media frames it in fundamentally Marxist terms, as a class struggle, as an us versus the wealthy team, when in reality that's not exactly the case, in fact it's usually not the case at all. Look, the reason tax havens exist is because tax hells do exist. If it weren't for tax hells, then tax havens would have no reason to exist at all. The existence of tax havens is perhaps one of the few limitations on politicians on how much they will tax. Every politician knows that if he raises taxes too much, then people will move their assets somewhere else to greener pastures. Or maybe I should say every politician should know that because clearly François Hollande hasn't got the memo and is now shocked that the most productive individuals are leaving France in droves. This status quo is called fiscal competition, in which states compete with each other for attracting capital. It's not a perfect system by any means, but it sure is superior to the globalist one-world government worldview. Now, it's interesting that the leftists are also 
big on claiming to oppose monopoly, but at the same time insist on a worldwide monopoly on taxes, civil liberties, culture, and everything else. But then again, consistency is not the lefty's strong point. I, on the other hand, I like to argue consistently. Why should the state be allowed to keep secrets from the rest of us, and we shouldn't? As long as the state is allowed to keep secrets, then so should we. And as long as there is fiscal competition, there will always be checks and balances whenever one or more governments decide to go full Macintosh on the rest of us. Because ultimately, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't have big government and freedom. You have to pick one. And with all its shortcoming, I would rather have the freedom to be left alone than the freedom to vote with my wallet and with my feet. Thank you very much. One of the main arguments for bigger and bigger control over tax havens forwarded by the usual suspect is the fact that terrorists and other corrupt officials hide their money there. Well, that is true up to a point. Most of the terrorists of the world actually don't hide their money in tax havens. In fact, the top 10 countries that are at the highest risk of financing terrorism or facilitating money laundering are, in this order, Iran, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Guinea-Bissau, Mali, Cambodia, Mozambique, Uganda, Swaziland, and Myanmar. Do you see any tax haven on this list? Panama is only the 23rd, Seychelles Islands is the 43rd, Luxembourg is the 71st, and the most popular tax haven at the moment, Hong Kong, is barely the 87th. Fun fact, Hong Kong is less likely to be used for financing terrorism than Greece, Japan, India, China, Brazil, or Russia. And Hong Kong is also equally likely to be used for financing terrorism with Switzerland. Also, the United States is more likely to be used for financing terrorism than Qatar and Uzbekistan. Are you going to tell me that Qatar and Uzbekistan are these fabulous, equitable paradises on Earth where everyone pays their fair share? Because that's exactly what the media implies. That countries with lower taxes are some dubious hellholes uh, and that the world would be better off if they were invaded and their sovereignty destroyed so the socialists can loot whatever wealth is being hidden there. By that standard, let's invade India. Now how much sense does that make? Arguing for the abolition of tax havens, or the fiscal paradises, because some terrorists hid their cash there, shows the level of intellectual bankruptcy in those who make such an argument, or a complete and utter disdain for basic freedoms, whichever comes first. Tax havens are overwhelmingly used by honest people who are sick and tired of being robbed by the maximal state in their countries of origin. Yes, criminals use tax havens too, but you know what? The same is true for everything else. Criminals use cars as well. They also use private homes to hide their crimes. How about we ban those, too? After all, if we'd ban cars, then bank robberies would happen a lot less frequently since robbers could no longer run fast from the crime scene. Not to mention it would advance the preservation of the environment. See what I did there? Also, if we ban private homes and everyone would be assigned a home by the state and if we introduce surveillance so the government always knows who visits who at any moment, then there would be no longer possible to hide terrorists in private homes. You see where I'm going with this? Offshore companies set up in tax havens are merely a tool, and, like any other tool, it can be used for plotting treacherous evil acts or for fundamentally moral acts, such as self-defense from the ever-increasing machine of institutionalized theft. Also, when people talk about offshore accounts, they always think of some remote, dodgy country, when in reality, Europe itself is riddled with offshore accounts. Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, Gibraltar, Monaco, Latvia, aka poor man's Luxembourg. What do you think these are? Another misconception is that only rich people have or can afford to have an offshore account. In reality, there's options even for poor people. Latvia has very good tax conditions for non-residents setting up holding companies there. 
If you live in the European economic area, you can save up quite a lot with a bit of care through the incentives offered by the Latvian government. And the fees and the paperwork to set things up are affordable enough that they make sense even for the lower end of the middle class to consider moving fiscally into Latvia. Just saying. To drive the point home about the hypocrisy of those railing against tax havens and the inconsistencies of those who see nothing wrong about this Panama Papers leak, let me read you this excerpt from Tyler Cohen's article over at the Marginal Revolution. Quote, Let's say a group of criminal defense lawyers kept a database of their confidential conversations with their clients. That would include clients charged with murder, robbery, DUI, drug abuse, and so on. In turn, a hacker would break, it, break into that database and post the information from those conversations on WikiLeaks. Of course, a lot of these, those conversations would appear to be incriminating because, let's face it, most of the people who require defense attorneys on criminal charges are, in fact, guilty. When asked why the hack was committed, the hacker would say, most of those people are guilty, I want to make sure they do not escape punishment. How many of us would approve of that behavior? Keep in mind, the hacker is spreading the information not only to prosecutors, but to the entire world and outside of any process sanctioned by the rule of law. The hacker is not backed by the serving of any criminal charges or judge-served warrants. Yet somehow many of us approved when the victims are wealthy and higher status, as in the case with the Panama Papers. Furthermore, most of those individuals probably did nothing illegal, but rather they were trying to minimize their tax burden through mostly legal shell corporations. That's really all there is to it. A spectacle of hypocrisy from sanctimonious control freaks. Now, many of you may be thinking, but Lucian, there's more than wealth shielded uh, from taxation there. There's also wealth stolen from tax money or obtained through fraud. Surely that's immoral. And I agree. That's why I started this video with outlining that politicians should be held to a higher standard for the simple reason that they write the rules and should thus be the first to joyfully abide by them. And, but there is also wealth in private homes obtained through fraud or through embezzlement, or through corruption. And when that is discovered, it is simply confiscated, auctioned, and if possible, the party that was victimized is provided some reparations. And the reality shows us that it was already known about the fact that Azerbaijani politicians have wealth stolen and shielded in tax havens, and the fact that many of those caught uh, on uh, the offside by this scandal were already on various blacklists, <clears throat> and you know the, all of these facts that just simply show that there are already ways to catch such individuals. Rallying against tax havens won't make the world a better place and won't see the guilty ones punished. But getting rid of the honest fiscal competition between the states will make the world a lot more socialist. And with that being said, thank you for watching and um, I'll see you around on Freedom Alternative.